This video is not intended for children but rather 20 something nerds that take cartoons way too seriously and overanalyze everything. If you are younger than 13 years old, you are not supposed to be on YouTube. I should have done this video months ago, but you know, life happens. You barely find any time to work on videos and when you have the time you suddenly have to talk about the My Little Pony series finale. Anyway, let's talk about the Dragon Prince season 1. Remember Avatar's Last Airbender? You probably do, it's like one of the best cartoons of all time and such. Well, one of the head writers and directors of that show teamed up with Justin Richmond, the director of Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, of all things, to create a new animated show that tries very, very hard to recapture the magic of Avatar The Last Airbender, with the additional twist that they also want to be Game of Thrones. Don't believe me? Well, just listen to this. Boys, you're going on a trip to the Bantha Lodge. But it's spring. That's the Winter Lodge. Well, winter is coming, eventually. Like Jesus is perhaps the most false reference I have ever seen. Well, now you might think that I really don't like the show and that's not really true. I do have a certain soft spot for it, but it has a lot of flaws and I would like to tackle some general problems strike right away. And the main issue with the show is its animation. You probably noticed it by now, but the show is CG animated and hey, it looks pretty great and stills actually. I think the character designs are very well done as well, so at first glance I actually like the look of the show, but then the characters are supposed to move and things start to fall apart. Basically, do you know it when you set the settings too high in a video game, everything looks good, but something is off about the movement of the characters? Well, that's basically the show in a nutshell. Normally, things improved a bit by season 2, but still, this is probably the biggest turn off. Okay, now let's talk about the actual story, I guess. So long ago, everyone lived together in harmony until some dipshit magician invented dark magic. The elves and the dragons didn't like that and exiled all of humanity. I mean, we don't know how supportive humans square of dark magic and how many actually practice it, but it seems a bit harsh to banish all of them. I suppose there's a bit more to the story than the small recap tells us. Now the Dragon King protects the border between the realm of the elves and the human realm until he was apparently murdered by a human using dark magic and they also destroyed his egg. So the elves sent some assassins after King Harrow and his son Estrin. They succeeded in killing the king, but Estrin managed to escape alongside his half-brother Callum and Rayla. One of the elf assassins sent for the job, but but ended up being too soft for it. Also, they discovered that the egg of the Dragon Prince wasn't actually destroyed, but rather stolen in secret by Viren, Harrow's advisor and Kurt magician. Ryla, Estrin and Callum plan to return the Dragon Egg to restore peace to the country and to prevent the war to escalate. But on their travel, they accidentally dropped the egg in some frozen water and they had to find a way to save it and the first season ends with them saving the Dragon Prince by making the egg hatch. Okay, let's cut to the chase and talk what I think is maybe the biggest flaw of the series. It tries to be morally grey. War is full of uncertainty. Why can't you do something about it? Can't you just make peace with them? It's not that simple. It seems pretty simple to me. You don't want to die, I'm sure the elves and dragons don't want to die, so everyone agrees. There are centuries of history, generations of wrongs and crimes, on both sides. I am responsible for some of those wrongs. Okay, Harrow, what exactly did the elves do? Admittedly, I do think that it sounds a bit harsh to punish the entire human race because a few of them use dark magic. In particular, since it doesn't appear to be a popular practice either. The only two dark mages that are introduced to us in the first season are Viren and his daughter Claudia, and they don't even use exclusively dark magic, prefer to use magical items, animals, and only really to use dark magic when there are no other options. And King Harrow doesn't really seem to like dark magic either, mostly tolerating it because Viren is his friend. There is a point to be made that the elves overreacted, okay, but what exactly was their punishment? They gave the humans an entire half of the continent where they established five kingdoms, all of which seem rather prosperous. It's not like the lands beyond the wall in Game of Thrones where there is always winter. Sure, maybe they have a bad harvest in one year and so on, but it does not appear that the humans are any worse off because of that banishment. As far as we know, the elves are basically just minding their own business and the dragons make sure that the humans don't cross the border to start some shit. And there hasn't been a war to speak of. It is only the act of killing the dragon king that sparked one. So what exactly drove the humans to 
kill the Dragon King and start a war. In particular war, they would have no chance of winning because even without the Dragon King, there are still other dragons around that are very angry now and as can naturally cast magic and are generally depicted as physical superior to humans as elves of Nah. Again, it is not that humans have like a legion of dark mages to even the odds. And chances are if they had, the elves probably would have been right in their assessment. Now we get some sort of answer to at least some of these questions in season 2, but right now we are only discussing season 1. Not to mention that I don't think that they are really satisfying answers either. So I keep that for my video on season 2. Now as of yet they haven't quite explained who actually killed the Dragon King. But the implication is that Viren did it on Harrow's order, and Viren took the dragon egg with him but didn't tell Harrow about it. We don't know what either of them expected to gain from that, and it should have been obvious that this would result in an unwinnable war. In particular since they both are aware of Moonshadow Elves, a race of elves that have so awesome assassins apparently that Harrow immediately accepts that he is dead as soon as he learns that they are after him. Let me repeat that, Harrow started a war against dragons and elves who has the advantage of magic, well and dragons, and those elves have assassins that are so great that it is a certain death sentence when they are after you even when you are sitting in a well defended castle full of guards and he knows that they are coming. So how exactly did he think that would turn out? So even if Harrow and Viren had a good reason for killing the Dragon King, it just seems like a pretty stupid thing to do. It would only doom them all. So basically the humans are the aggressors and started a war they can't win, making it a bit hard to root for them. And there's of course another side to it, Raylak, like Callum and Astrin believes that they can prevent the war by returning the Dragon King, which seems like rather wishful thinking. The Dragon King is still dead and it's not like they can say, oh no, that was a big misunderstanding. Well, but now let's talk about something more positive, the characters. You can probably call Callum the protagonist of the story. Frankly at first glance he seems a bit like soccer, an impression that is not exactly helped by the fact that they share the same voice actor. He is the eccentric smart guy with self esteem issues. Admittedly I think the approach that he is a step prince is a bit weird. He is the son of the queen and she gave birth to him before she married King Harrow. It's just something you rarely see in fantasy literature. Frankly it kind of feels like it was mostly introduced as a plot point so they can have a similar character arc to Jon Snow. How he doesn't feel like a proper part of the family because he is not actually Harrow's son and so on. But they didn't want to call him a bastard. Well, and and it is probably only a matter of time until we get a shocking revelation about his biological father. Five bucks that he's like half elf. Rayla, on the other hand, is the greatest Scottish elf in fiction. I'm not sure how many they are, considering that the Scottish accent is usually more of a dwarf thing, but she is just the right amount of quirky with a great design and she is a badass to boot. Frankly, the one thing that kinda bothers me about her is that her being too soft for the job in episode 1 seems a bit contrived. You would think that the Moonshadow Elves wouldn't bring a complete newbie to an important job like the assassination of a king without making sure that she is fit for the job and not just because one of them saw a lot of potential in her. Estrin is a bit, well he is a small child and doesn't really contribute much until the end of the season when it is revealed that he can talk to animals. For the most part it just seems like the writers aren't quite sure what to do with him and he feels more like a load to the group as a result. He mostly serves as comic relief but frankly he mostly annoys me, getting a bit better in season 2 though when the writers apparently figure out what they want to do with him. Vyra is probably the most interesting character of the bunch. He more or less serves as the main antagonist in season 1 considering that he stole the dragon egg, practiced dark magic and so on. But what makes him interesting is that he isn't stupidly evil. He had a genuine friendship with King Harrow and only does what he thinks is the best. While initially reluctant to do so he was willing to die for Harrow by switching bodies with him for crying out loud. However due to some poor communication they ended up having a fight. He maybe put Harrow's soul inside a bird before the elves killed him, not confirmed yet but he knows there were some clues that imply that. And once Harrow was out of the picture he decided to have Esrin killed so he can be king but again it seemingly mostly stems from the fact that he thinks that the kingdom needs a strong ruler in these dark times. He certainly is a villain but I think the morally grey approach works pretty well for him as he seems to act out of pragmatism for the greater good. So his intrigues are rather interesting to watch. His children however are probably the most misstanded part of season 1. Sauron is a bit annoying being mostly played as dumb muscle, Claudia on the other hand is a pretty delightful character. Sorry. Long night. Drink this. I call it hot brown morning potion.
That's good. I mean, you gotta love her for that alone. The problem is that those two don't really get anything to do in season 1, but we still constantly cut to them as if we are given the order by Viren to find Astra and Callum. Problem is that they only really make progress on that front during the season finale. You can basically cut most of the scenes as they only contain some rather forced humor. Them hunting down Callum and Astra seems a bit like an attempt to replicate the dual storyline you had in Avatar episodes, where often great parts of an episode are devoted to Zuku hunting down the gang. But since it never comes to a confrontation or anything else interesting happening, it only feels like padding instead. This is another general problem of the season. The pacing is just kinda off. I mean, it doesn't feel particularly slow or rushed, but you know the pacing is kinda like a Game of Thrones episode, but they are only half as long, so after every episode I'm sitting there asking myself, is that it? In particular episode 5 and 6 feel like nothing is really happening. Callum, Rayla and Eswan are just traveling around. If we compare to Avatar again, one thing that made the show so appealing was that the characters went to interesting places and met interesting people. But here it is just them walking around, chatting a bit, Rayla being afraid of boats. Heck, I'm more invested in Viren's storyline because at least there are actually things happening. He tries to run the kingdom, but since he's not actually king, everyone tries to undermine him. He is facing actual conflict even if he is the bad guy. Meanwhile, Rayla thinks it's a good idea to confess that she was set to murder Estrin while they are literally standing on thin ice. The scene just feels so contrived and stupid it, and it is essential to the plot because it results in the egg dropping into the ice water and the dragon prince almost dying before he is even born. You know, you could have at least had some fight Sauron there instead, so he wouldn't feel so useless. After that, we finally get to a town with actual people in it and we get to see human Rayla. Greetings, fella humans, human fellas. I sure do like hanging out with other humans and talking about things like money and starting wars. That's pretty good, actually. Totally, my good human friend. Bring it in. High four! Uh, can you impersonate a fifth finger? Here, things get admittedly more interesting again because stuff is actually happening. They go up the mountain because they hear of a healer that might be able to save the Dragon Prince, and while things turn out not quite as they hoped for, it at least makes for a decent finale. I do like how Callum has to sacrifice a storm up that allowed him to cast magic, the one thing that made him feel special to save the Dragon Prince. So, yeah, the season finale was actually pretty good. But it doesn't quite change the fact that it felt like a whole bunch of nothing. There were only 9 episodes, but it felt like there was only enough plot for 4. And that's not even bring up some of the humor that felt rather forced. Eh, but I guess it's a good point to wrap things up. Personally, I do sort of like The Dragon Prince, mostly because it feels like a fantasy novel. I do, however, think that the show would have benefited from being a bit more episodic in its structure and having at least twice as much episodes where the characters actually arrive at interesting places. You now have them actually talk to people, show the world you created and don't have your characters just walk through an empty forest. Give us a reason to care about the country they are trying to save. But there's a certain charm to the series regardless, mostly because I really enjoy Rayla and Viren. And the latter having actually a rather interesting story. Line. But what about you? Did you watch the Dragon Prince? Anything that bothered you? Let me know in the comments below. I am Tricky Fox. Stay foxy. Sly as a fox, you got me under your spell. But you know I'll never tell that I know you know so well. Sometimes you can be too smart for your own.